This episode that you're about to hear was filmed weeks and weeks ago, and it's just now airing, um, but it was filmed before Nick Cordelis passed away. Um, in this episode, I do mention my current relationship, and before airing it, I just wanted to, you know, we took a break last week. We didn't air anything, but that was because I wanted to respect Nick, his family, just everyone involved and everyone that's hurting with his passing right now. And I do speak about my current relationship, but I'm also still mourning the loss of someone who meant the absolute world to me. Nick and I were in each other's lives for six years. We were engaged. There were so many great memories. And at the end of the day, Nick made a huge impact on my life. And he left such a mark on this world. I mean, I cannot tell you how many people have reached out and told me stories about how Nick impacted their life. And if his passing teaches us anything, I think it's to love and love hard and to treat people with so much love and kindness because that's exactly what he did. So Nick, I love you. You'll be missed and you left a mark. Well, I'm back guys. I'm back. We're doing a solo episode. It's been a long time since we've done one of these and I feel like they're kind of needed like as a regroup every few months to set the record straight on a lot of things. Um, Since last time, I mean, a lot of things have come out um, in the public and it's been an interesting week, um, we could say. Obviously, Special Forces airs on the 25th. So when you hear this it will actually have already aired and i am so excited it was such a crazy journey i mean i went into it not gonna lie i went into it like kind of cocky confident like oh i'm gonna kill this i'm gonna make it to this point that point not gonna give any spoilers um but it was a challenge it was definitely a challenge emotionally uh more emotional than physical in my opinion but we have that. Um, I also did Nick Files podcast. It's called Vile Files. And if you don't know Nick, he was on The Bachelorette. He's part of the whole Bachelor, Bachelorette franchise. And his podcast is, it's a fun setting. It is, a, you know, really fun setting. Um, but I definitely learned some lessons from that podcast. Um, and I'm grateful for that. But I wish I would have known them beforehand um also too we're trying something different i'm just gonna cut myself off but we're trying something a little different aaron is obviously y'all know aaron the greatest uh one of my best friends and i say that because like she calls me out on my shit and she's gonna be maybe cutting me off at times correcting me on things um just you know making it a little more fun and exciting so it was probably a good time to introduce me considering i was already laughing as you were (laughs) talking and people are like what's that random laughing voice in the background it's me and yes i will be happy to call you out as much as needed it's kind of my thing thank you (laughs) so that's the other person that you'll be hearing on here but going back to the podcast i did um (laughs) it had been a long few days okay i was in la filming a completely different show that you guys will hear about in the future um can't really talk about it so I was filming another show and then I was also there for press for special forces and I think I was just like delusional I was in a state of delusion clearly um because I spilled my entire life on this podcast but also it was bound and determined to come out like relationship status because TMZ obviously was at LAX when we were coming down the escalator and photos have surfaced. Also, photos at a concert have surfaced. So it was bound and determined to come out. But there is one thing that I did in the podcast that I look back and it's like so cringeworthy. Um, And it was, I tend to use humor to make light of a serious situation. That's one of my like good but not so good qualities because sometimes I don't know when, where the line is uh, with appropriateness. And I used dark humor 
in a very serious situation that I maybe wish I wouldn't have used. And that was... Now I'm now I'm like trying to not spill all the beans because now I'm trying to. Haven't they been spilled? They've spilled. Yes, they've been. You're sp- trying not to repeat the spilled beans, yes. which are indeed spilled. Yes, basically is oh, what I'm, I would just do it. <laughs> That's basically what I'm trying to do. Um, but I think just with Robert's situation, I people obvi- don't know what you're talking about. Some people, a lot of people do. A TMZ certainly does, <laughs> but not everybody listening to this. Okay, so I went on Nick's podcast, and obviously he asked about me dating and where that was, and I spilled the beans and was like, "Yeah, I'm dating someone who their wife like tried to murder them," and I said it in such a just like nonchalant, humorous way, um, which in reality it's not funny. Um, I was using my humor to deflect because I was so uncomfortable in the situation. I mean, I literally got up from the podcast, y'all, and my outfit was soaked because I was just like sweating out of nervousness. And so now I look back at it and I'm like, okay, that really wasn't appropriate. It was very immature. It's just looking at it like that's one of those moments where it's like, oh, I want to like disappear because even though that's how I deal with hardship is to like use humor it's not always the right thing to do so I could have approached that situation differently but now it's like all right we learn from it we move on um and so yeah that's kind of been like my life it's been everywhere there's also been something too that I would love to get people's opinions on just because there's been headlines of the fact that you know i'm dating a married person um that is so i mean legally sure but also it's such a complex situation of someone that yes like filed for divorce in the first half of the year um and it's the whole situation's complex. So sure, it would be great if this person was like legally divorced, divorced, but obviously that hasn't happened yet due to other circumstances. So I would never date a actively married person. I want to make that very clear. Um, I also think it's safe to say that he's not going to go back on his decision to carry out the divorce, considering his life is potentially contingent on it. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And so I think that's the hard part is, and I hate having to defend myself, but I think I play it so strong that like it doesn't bother me. Things don't bother me. I'm fine. But the reality of things when like my character is questioned and the person I know I am is questioned, it's really hard to just take all the blows that keep coming my way. When it comes to that, when it comes to people saying oh so where are the kids when savannah's off you know gallivanting doing whatever with this person and that is the biggest blow of the whole thing because i have dedicated my life to these kids like i am at baseball tournaments i'm at school pickup i'm i mean i'm there every night i just got back from my la trip and the day i got back i got back at 1 p.m was up since what I think four o'clock that morning got home immediately went school pickup grocery store and made dinner like I I can confirm that because sometimes when I get bored (laughs) all of our friends will just track each other and I wanted to hang out on Saturday but you were in the middle of a green field in Murfreesboro for like eight (laughs) hours I'm guessing at a baseball tournament so I'm done. can fact check and confirm that. Yeah. So that's the hardest part for me is I hate feeling like I have to defend myself, but my whole life is now these two kids. And what sucks is that we live in a world that is just so like, Hey, mental health comes first, put yourself first. You can't be good for anyone else if you're not good for yourself. But then I have all these people coming at me that's like, hey, these kids come first. You should do nothing for yourself. And that's also something that I'm learning right now is like I have so much respect for single parents 
And not just, I think there's this too, also single mothers is they're always spoken about. But what about single fathers that are out here too, that are literally being mom and dad as well? Um, I think my whole situation, it's given me so much respect for single dads because also I'm like seeing it firsthand and they don't get enough praise and love and respect. Um, I think we're just so used to seeing single mothers and that's something that's really opened my eyes to is it's not just us single mothers. It's also single fathers as well that are trying to figure out how to navigate the world, how to raise their kids to be decent, loving, honorable members of society while also like not forgetting about themselves in the background. And that's kind of the stage I'm at right now is like, okay, these kids are so important, but how can I be good for them if I'm not good for myself? And also like, I would love some adult interaction. Like I would love to not just be talking about TikTok and YouTube videos and slime and all, like all these different things. I would love to have someone to share all the hard things with, all the good things with, to just have that conversation with an adult and to have that connection. And it's hard to, to not feel guilty about it because, okay, well, if I go see this person, then I'm going to miss out on this, this, and this. And so that's kind of I don't know. I would love to hear people's opinions and beliefs on this situation of like how much time are we allowed to give ourselves in the midst of raising children solo? Like, I think that's a good question because I feel like a lot of people, first off, the divorce rate is, I want to say 50% or higher. It's higher. Yeah. 50% or higher. So you have these single parent lifestyles. But one thing to remember is a lot of single parents do have the mother or father in the picture to help 50% of the time or to show up. And if something goes wrong, you call that other parent. Or if you don't have the other parent, a lot of people sometimes have their parents that will step in and help. And hey, mom, can you do this? Or dad, can you do this for the kids? I don't have that. (laughs) I don't have their other parent doing I don't have you know the ability to call mom and dad and say hey can you help me with the kids do this that like I stepped into an impossible role and that's what I think a lot of people forget is I didn't go out here and have these kids (laughs) like I and then now I'm turning around trying to date trying to do whatever I mean I'm 26 years old with these two kids and it just feels like right now it's like I'm damned if I do damned if I don't I'm in an impossible situation and I'm constantly being judged for how I'm handling it yeah and that's and you know like at the very beginning like I was just all them yeah I mean it took it took a while for you to even be willing to step away at all yeah. because you didn't want them to feel abandoned you were trying to create some consistency for them mm-hmm. but also when you do have to leave town which oftentimes it's for work yeah. or for potential opportunities that would maybe even involve them and provide for your family yeah because you went from having people also forget you went from having like two or three tv shows worth of income so like you're trying to make up for a lot of that as well mm-hmm. um but it's not like you're leaving that it's not like you're putting them like leaving them at home alone. I mean, you're like, you have your, you have your grandparents step in. Yeah. But that's also difficult because like my grandmother's almost 80 years old. Right. So that's a big ask. And, and it's just, she just doesn't, I I know the kids are safe. I know they're fed, but other than that, (laughs) you know, that's that's about it. They're safe and fed. Um, And so like right now, it's like, all right, I need to find a good, reliable nanny, like someone that can be there and take them to do fun things and keep them involved. And but also in order to do that, you have to make money to do that. So I have to be working. I have to be 
doing all of these different things. And I mean, I'm a hustler. Like I will do just about anything to make sure that I can provide for my family. And let's correct that. Not anything. I will do just about anything within my moral compass to provide for my family. So I'm not going out here, you know, only fans, escorting, nothing like that. Okay. Um. <laughs> I do think, I think that we have all been close to, I'm going to rephrase that. <laughs> when people were asking for your feet pics Dude. and times were hard, I was like, do it. <laughs> you know, do it's it. a foot pick. Who cares? I Chase sold his. Chase sold his. Yes. I was sitting at Craig's in Beverly Hills this past weekend with like all the cast members from Special Forces and somehow feet pics got brought up and like they pulled up Wiki Feet and I have a five star rating on Wiki Feet with over like 150 photos of my feet. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't think, I think that could be inside your moral compass without really messing anything up. <laughs> Okay, just the thoughts of someone loving feet is absolutely insane. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love when dinner is made easy. And I'm not going to lie, my schedule has been absolutely insane. That's why I've gone to DoorDash. The kids love DoorDash. So do I. And we love it because we can order our dinner and have it delivered directly to our door. I also love that DoorDash now delivers groceries. So if you're missing the syrup to your pancakes or you just ran out of your favorite coffee creamer. With DoorDash grocery delivery, you can get what you want right when you need it. This is a complete game changer for me because there's so many times where I have all the ingredients except one thing that I need in order to make a meal. So I cannot wait to try DoorDash grocery delivery. It's going to be a game changer in my life. So I hope you guys jump on the DoorDash train with me, whether it's having your dinner delivered from your favorite restaurant or having your groceries delivered. Delivered. And you can get 50 and you can get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code Savannah at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code Savannah. Don't forget, that's code Savannah, S A V A N N A H, for 50 50% off your first order with DoorDash. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by BetterHelp. I don't know about you guys, but life has been rough for me recently. I mean, I've just wanted to dig a hole and never come out, if I'm being honest. But that's where I turned to BetterHelp. BetterHelp has been such an amazing resource for me to get the therapy that I need. And the good thing about it is if I speak to a therapist and we just don't connect, I can immediately get a new one. And that's what's so amazing because let's face it, one therapist does not fit all. Recently, I feel like my brain's just sort of getting in its own way. I mean, I know what I should do. I know I should talk about my feelings. I know I should get with my therapist. And I know what's good for me. But it's been hard to just do it. And you know what? I have finally shown up and I've been speaking to my therapist. And therapy truly does help you figure out what's holding you back, what you need out of life, how to deal with trauma and loss and all the hurdles that life throws our way. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Savannah today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E, lp.com slash savannah do we need to go back to feet pics or should we move on <laughs> yeah with the feet i don't know it's we're not there yet we, we're, we're, you're we're not, not that there. desperate no and also too though that's the biggest that's one thing i do want to clear up is <laughs> the whole like money thing of people saying oh she's just with this person because look at his bank account not true at all 
thank God God has been on my side because with real estate, podcast, social media, speaking engagements, numerous TV shows that I've done, like I'm good financially solo. Like I'm not asking someone to do anything for me. I'm just not that person. It's, we know I have dated broke. Like you, <laughs> excuse me. You have dated, you don't have a type. No. You don't have a, a monetary status type. I mean, I think you'd think it like if all other things were equal and you could, you know, maybe. But like normally you don't have a physical type. Lord knows you don't have an age limit. <laughs> you don't have a bank account. Yeah, I mean, there is the girl does not have a type to a point where sometimes it's concerning to her closest friends. <laughs> but I mean, valid. Okay, <laughs> I was going to try to argue with that, but there is no arguing to be had. Um, but I'm doing good on my age range. It's it's better for sure yeah i haven't really at i don't 12 years okay that's oh, good. way 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 better <laughs> she was seriously considering dating i mean you would date kevin costner if he would date you oh and he's my 70 gosh. what three i don't age is just a number when it comes to kevin costner i didn't tell you what happened on my flight this is breaking news guys breaking did you meet news. kevin costner no but i got close so on my flight out to LA, you know, I was in the window seat and then this guy was in the aisle seat and the row in front of me. So we're diagonal. So like you can see a lot that's going on. Um, he was like chowing down on a salad, like nothing I've ever seen before. So mm -hmm. it like really got my attention. And <laughs> because we know how I am about like food sounds, etiquette yeah. sounds, not my thing. Um, but he's messaging on his phone. And his font was so big. Like, I could see everything happening. Right. And he looked kind of familiar. So I was, like, trying to figure out, like, who is this person? And me, I'm nosy. My whole viewpoint is, like, don't put it out there for the world to see like, if you don't want anyone to see it. Like, put a privacy screen on. Turn your brightness down. Maybe not make your font, like, a gazillion sizes too big. And he's talking, I'm almost positive it was Kevin Costner's wife's, well, ex-wife's boyfriend. Oh, you really read his messages? Yes. Do you know how, you have to have read everything to come to that conclusion. Okay, well, I knew, I recognized him and I saw some photos and then I was like, hmm. And then he had her contact name under just her first name. Just her first name. So naturally you Googled it. So naturally I'm like sitting here researching and then it talks about getting like forensic accountants involved to audit all the corporations through the divorce. Dude, I, I was so invested. I wonder if we should be saying this. Oh, it's fine. Okay. I mean, I already said it on next podcast, so. Okay. But it was, I Just was because like, you said something before does not mean it's fine, by the way. It's like <laughs> not a good gauge of like, is this appropriate? That's really not, no. But keep going. But I was so invested. Like, I was like, holy cow. Now, the only thing that would have made it better was if it was Kevin Costner right there. Then, oh, God, I would have been so invested. And there is only a 42-year age difference. I just looked it up. It's fine. It's fine. Age is just a number, okay? I guess that would be, like, my one hall pass. Yeah. Is Kevin Costner. Like, who, why, why would it not be? Right. Let's be real. In, like, your normal day-to-day, -day, what age range are you trying to stay within? I mean, I know you're not trying hard. But like, <laughs> what age range do you want to fall in if it's not Kevin Costner? Um, I would say no more than 15 years. Okay. So you're 41 is your new cap? Yeah. I mean, that has come down <laughs> by a decade or so. <laughs> no more than that, which, and some people are going to be like, oh my God, that's too much. But also you have to think of the amount of life I've lived and also now with like raising two kids and one of them being 17, I, I'm raising two kids. I'm keeping my career going. I am responsible for a gazillion and one different people. I'm fighting for my parents. I'm speaking to lawyers every other day. Like my life is so much more mature than a 26 year olds. Yeah. You get at least like a seven or eight year. Like, yeah. 
So addition. And to men, I'm pretty sure they say men don't like stop maturing till 40. Don't stop or don't start. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so i think that would be like a good you know we're within that age range yeah, yeah. Th I, that i can handle so we're doing pretty good yeah better for sure yeah for sure definitely a lot better so wait can i'm gonna i got a couple questions yes also aaron probably has tons of questions for me because we have not seen each other in a minute in like a hot minute yeah oh um what do you have okay a couple things yes. your last episode you and Chase submitted each other for The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Yes. Have we heard anything back about that? No. Do you think, who do you think is more likely to get selected? I mean, I don't want to say it to like sound full of myself by any means, but, but I'm going to say it and it's probably going to sound full of myself, but like, I just think I would create a lot of controversy you know, and I mean, Lord knows I've been in the press pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. My mother was like, Savannah, you were on Entertainment Tonight three nights in a row. Who said that? all different things. Who said that? My mom. She watched it. It's on Entertainment Tonight three different nights for all different things. Ladies, there is nothing worse than suffering with an uncomfortable bra. Thankfully, Honey Love has revolutionized the bra game. Upgrade from traditional bras that use uncomfortable underwire and bulky fabrics that trap heat. Honey Love's bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. Plus, they're made with fabric that's so soft, it feels like a second skin. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. It is so next level comfortable, you'll forget you're even wearing it. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com forward slash unlocked. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com forward slash unlocked unlocked. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. So please, please, please support our show and tell them that we sent you. It's time to ditch the underwire for good. Thanks to Honey Love. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening to me talk, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy and you could save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $750 on average and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, National average 12 month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June of 2022 and May of 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. That's their way of also connecting with us is to like watch interviews, whatever. And so, yeah, I personally think it would probably be in the best interest of the Bachelor and Bachelorette franchise to choose me. But see, I can't do it now, you know? So it's like, maybe choose Chase. You can't do it now? No. Why? <sighs> because you're dating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, obviously... I mean, it wouldn't be like people in the Bachelor and Bachelorette franchise to go on the show with a significant other. Uh. <laughs> Shots fired. But Chase, and, and Ch I'll play the devil's advocate. Chase was pretty, Chase said he wanted to find love. Yeah, Chase does want to find love, I think. He wants unconditional love, but with this, 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 and this. Not sure that makes sense, but whatever. Um, okay, do you, since we're talking about your mom, do you want to give a little update on your parents yeah i mean i think everything is still status quo somewhat i am continuing to fight 
like cats and dogs every single day to expose all the corrupt things that are going on in their facilities, the inhumane conditions. Everyone knows I will forever speak about those things because it's just not okay. It's getting difficult because obviously yesterday was exactly eight months since mom and dad had been gone. Um, so yesterday was exactly eight months since mom and dad had been gone. And it really, I think it hit everyone pretty hard. I know for me, I mean, the kids and I just hung out at the house all day yesterday and we all were kind of just in our own little weird moods uh, because it's sad because you think of all the life that is moving on without them and also just like even me dating like would love to go and tell like my mom anytime something good happened or anytime something bad happened or get her advice but it's not like I can pick up the phone and call and so it's really sad to see the amount of things they're missing out on and that just makes me want to fight even harder to get them home but it's still I mean it's the same crap every single day that they have to endure so there's really nothing crazy to update other than Obviously, we have the appeal that we're working on and still, well, not even working on. We're just waiting to hear back from the government, which could be any day now. So it's just a weird waiting season that we're in, which I don't really like because anyone that knows me knows that like I want to like let's work, work, work so we can figure out the outcome. And unfortunately, in this situation, there's nothing we can do to get the outcome any sooner. So it kind of sucks. Um, there's been like a decent amount of stuff in the news about their sentences coming down. Yeah. Do you want to explain that? I know why, but like, do you want to explain how that works? Yeah. So I think that's the biggest misconception is it's like reduce sentence, reduce sentence. And it's not for anything other than the First Step Act, which the First Step Act was implemented under the Trump administration. And it was really Jared Kushner who was behind the whole First Step Act. And I think he was behind the First Step Act because he had personally been impacted by the federal prison system with his father. And he was the reason that President Trump implemented it because at the very beginning, President Trump wasn't really a fan of it. And then I think through Jared's personal experiences and maybe educating the president on this topic and the personal feelings that it brought up was why it was implemented. And the First Step Act is a way for these men and women to enter back into society in a quicker manner, but also a safer manner. So you are allowed to take classes that will then in turn take time off your sentences so and teach classes yeah exactly you can also teach classes which also gets you fsa credits so whether it's a financial class a religious class um there's you know whatever it may be you get time off your sentences so that's what mom and dad's reductions were were good time credits fsa credits and for every 30 i think it's they get 15 days off for every 30 they spend something of that nature um so it definitely has helped to reduce the sentences and for that we're grateful we're grateful that there are programs out here that help to get your loved ones home sooner so that's that's really what that was now obviously we're fighting for a bigger reduction because there's been new sentencing guidelines that have come down the pipeline that go into effect in february and mom and dad qualify for those so if that happens that will take a big chunk of their sentence off and for that I'm extremely grateful. So we're continuing to utilize the system as it's been presented to us and whatever we have to do along the way, we'll do, but we're extremely grateful for the First Step Act because its dad's sentence was cut down by two years, mom by a year, so. Is that already because of what's been implemented of the like the sentencing no. differences? No, so the That's sentence- That's still coming. Yeah, the sentencing, uh, So the sentencing commission came down with some new guidelines that will go into effect in February. And they qualify. Yes. And it's retroactive. So it'll 
it's not just going forward it'll go back and they qualify so if that happens i mean they could get multiple years off their sentences and that's something that everyone who's in that position if they can will be taking advantage of so when it comes down the pipeline todd and julia's sentence has been reduced we can know that it's not a celebrity status thing that it is a not like a national or federal mandate exactly on sentencing change yes okay 100 percent. it's not oh getting special treatment it is for everyone in the federal prison system so it's also for non-violent offenders which clearly they are and there's all these different stipulations that go along with it and there's tons of people who are going to start applying for it in November and then it will go into effect in February so we're going to be part of those people that file a motion to for the two-point reduction and like I said that will take years off their sentences and help them get home sooner so for that I'm grateful and your parents are not only I just know this so I'm helping remind you so because I don't think you always remember what you know that other people don't your parents are not only taking classes and participating in programs that get them off they are teaching them like yes. your mom is t- I know that your mom's taught stuff did your dad and if you're allowed to talk about this yeah did Todd teach a trauma-based course didn't your mom teach something religious yes yeah, so I can't I know she's taught some or she's leading a bible group maybe it's not part of that program well no I know she's definitely taught classes like she taught a real estate class she she's definitely taught classes I mean she's got all these certificates from like teaching and completing classes all these things overachiever overachiever Julia's always has been um and dad's definitely taught some classes too trauma is one of them um i think another one was a financial class they asked your mom to teach a finance class which how ironic she goes really you want me to do it yeah i don't think i'm that bad (laughs) yeah like exactly like that's the whole our whole system is so out of whack nothing makes sense like literally nothing like the bop the bureau of prisons the acronym that everyone uses for the BOP is backwards on purpose because everything the BOP does is backwards on purpose. Like nothing makes sense. So, and that I hope can be changed. I know right now the BOP is under a ton of scrutiny um, because they just met yesterday, I think with like the Senate and all these politicians are fed up they're fed up with not getting answers to their questions not getting a breakdown of where this funding is going to not it's the whole thing is so crazy and what's so unfortunate is that the director of the BOP can't answer these questions and that's where politicians are getting angry is like why can you not answer these questions on employment on budgets on you know your plan for the future and obviously it's a whole system of people so it's not just one person's fault or problem but it gives me hope that now politicians are finally getting on board saying hey something's not right is that because assist a lot of the prisons are privately owned there's some that are privately owned and some that are federally owned. But the so. BOP is a federal organization, yes, right? The BOP. I'm actually asking you. So yeah. I don't, okay. Yeah. So the BOP is a federal organization. They receive federal funding, um, but they also they receive federal funding, but they don't receive enough federal funding to truly do what needs to be done. Okay. I mean, there's over two billion dollars worth of repairs that need to be made, and they were given sixty million from Congress. Yeah. That- so like when you have you, you don't have to take a finance class to know that's not enough yeah exactly like two billion you get 60 million doesn't make sense um and it's just not enough to truly do anything so that's the sad part is like when are we going to invest in our people first that's my issue is like let's invest in our people before we start investing in other countries and their people uh regardless of what you believe someone has or has not done no one deserves to be living in conditions like mom and dad are living in because sure they were given a 12 and 7 year sentence but with the conditions that they're living in they're really being given a life sentence because of being exposed to black mold, asbestos, lead-based paint, unclean drinking water. I mean, it goes on. 
So you're not just having, you don't just have a seven year sentence. You literally have a life sentence because of the health conditions that you're going to be suffering from. And I know even with mom, mom has this crazy cough that she's had for months now. Mm -hmm. And like, she's a cancer survivor and these conditions that she's living in, you can't help but wonder, is this having an impact on her? Yeah. And we're starting to see these huge class action lawsuits. You know, Camp Lejeune is a big one. And you're starting to see it pick up with these class action lawsuits because people are literally dying from these conditions. So you that speaks for itself. Um, and so I hope that these federal officials take hold of that and say, hey, what we're doing is not okay. This isn't humane. And start giving funding where funding is needed or just maybe come up with a whole new plan on how to punish these people.